Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. I greet you in the spirit of truth and transformation. Thank you for joining me this morning as I broadcast live from the Truth and Transformation Ministries Spiritual Center. Let us just have a moment of prayer. We know in spirit there is no time and there's no space. We are one in the spirit. There's only one power and one presence, God the good. Through God, we manifest good in our lives. We give thanks for good health. We give thanks for good relationships. We give thanks for excellent finances. We give thanks for the ability to pray. We know that prayer is definite spiritual thinking. And as we expand our understanding of prayer, we move from begging to knowing. We know that when we pray, the prayer has been answered. And as we pray, we see the prayer fulfilled through our spiritual eye. Now we are free to become the prayer that we're praying. Doubt, worry, anxiety, all of that flees because perfect love casts out all fear. We pray from a place of strength. We pray from a place of power. We pray from the spirit knowing within all is perfect, whole, and complete. We are rich, because we are enriched with the Spirit of God. We are rich because we are enriched with the Spirit of God. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning again. This month we are focusing on the theme of wisdom. And wisdom is the application of of spiritual understanding. Wisdom is the application of spiritual understanding. Now, when you apply divine wisdom in all areas of your life, you grow in wisdom. At Truth and Transformation Ministries, we have an annual operating budget that is really based upon our spiritual understanding. And as we have operated as we've operated from that budget, we've grown in wisdom and in wealth. God's wisdom works in all aspects of our lives. Wisdom says that prayer is definite spiritual thinking. Wisdom says that prayer is definite spiritual thinking. And this is the season. And this is a time to move from wishful thinking and stand on a firm spiritual foundation of spiritual thinking. We're moving from wishful thinking to a firm foundation of spiritual thinking. Now, a solid prayer contains three elements, knowing, seeing, and becoming. Knowing, seeing, and becoming. Today's transformative lesson in living is know it, see it, and be become it. Know it, see it, and become it. Number one, you have the power within you. You have the power to know that the prayer that you've prayed has already been answered. You have to know within your gut, within your soul, that when you pray a prayer, that that prayer has already been answered. Now, we're moving into a higher level of what prayer is. We're expanding our understanding and knowing of what prayer is. And what I'm saying this morning is that you have to know that when you pray a prayer, that that prayer has already been answered. Even the scripture tells you, before you call, I will answer. That means that the good that you desire has really already 
been fulfilled. Now, in this age, we're going to be stretching our understanding of what faith is and really everything that we're going through right now is requiring a greater level of faith. But faith is more than positive belief. That's what we've been traditionally taught. Now we are being challenged right now in this moment with the COVID-19 virus, we are being challenged to realize faith as knowing. We are being challenged to know that faith means knowing. And see, right now, we have to challenge ourselves to know that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have to know in this age and in this environment that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have to know that from a very, from a deep and a very gut level. We have to know that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If we don't affirm that, we'll be sick. So we have to step into that place of the all-knowing aspect that's within our soul. And in truth, Faith is the all-knowing aspect of your being. There's a difference between believing in God and knowing God. See, believing in God simply means that God exists. Belief, though, leaves us with some lingering questions. You can't just stand in belief alone. Belief leaves us with some lingering questions like, where is God? Or did God hear my prayer? Knowing God means that you are one with the all-knowing power. You are one with God and that you have direct contact with God. See, knowing God makes you feel more self-assured. And you know that all things are working together for your, for your good. So you're coming out of an uncertain place that sometimes belief leads us into. And we're stepping into knowing which is being more certain within our soul in terms of who we are and what we are capable of doing. See, knowing erases doubt from your mind. Knowing erases doubt from your mind. Now, when I graduated from Georgia State, I applied to graduate school, and the first two schools that I applied to denied my entry. But because I had a knowingness Within me, I was able to go on to graduate school. I was accepted at Clark Atlanta University. And eventually, I graduated with an A average and moved on to get my doctorate. Nothing and no one stops a well-made-up mind. Nothing and no one stops a person with a made-up mind. But the key is, the key is that you must know who you are in God and know that the prayer that you have prayed has really already been fulfilled. See, you got to anchor yourself in the knowingness of who you are. See, maybe you might say to yourself, before I call, God answers and fulfills my prayer. Before I even call, the God within my soul answers and fulfills my prayer. See, stop making doubt and uncertainty your most intimate friends. Some of us have just surround ourselves in negativity. Stop making doubt and uncertainty your most intimate friends. Know who you are and know your desires have already been fulfilled. Know that you have a direct connection to the all-knowing God. That's within your soul. So you have to know that whatever prayer that you're praying today, that that prayer has already been answered. All you have to do is walk in the knowingness. Number two, see the fulfillment of your prayer through your mind's eye. See the fulfillment of your prayer through your mind's eye. The scripture says, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of life. That means that if you are singularly focused on God and not blinded by doubt, the body of your desires will come to the light. I'm going to repeat that again. That means that if you are singularly 
focused on God and not blinded by doubt, the body of your desires will come to the light. That means it will be manifested. See, what you will pray, what you pray for will come to the light of day, but you have to see it from within your soul before you can manifest it. See, see the good that you desire. Visualize the good that you desire. Visualizing the good you are praying for adds color and depth to your prayer. See, you got to, you got to visualize it. You got to see it. And then that allows you to step into that, into that prayer. See, after I finished graduate school, it was my desire to move to Washington, D.C. and become a federal contractor. And as I visualized myself working there, I eventually realized and came to the awareness that I could step into it. And eventually I manifested that goal of living and working in Washington, D.C. Visualization allows you to step inside your prayer and know that it is real. See, if everything is real. We're stepping into the reality of ourselves. When we step into the reality, the true reality of ourselves, we're stepping into the, to the spiritual reality. See, prayer is not wishing and it's not hoping. See, prayer moves you toward the, to the realization that God is real within your soul. See, Mary McLeod Bethune, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King were great leaders because they were great visionaries. They were great leaders because they were great visionaries. See, you have to see the prayer that you pray. There's a spiritual blueprint within you, and if you can see it, you can manifest it. Number three. You must become the prayer that you pray. Now, the scripture says, pray as if your prayer has already been answered. Pray as if your prayer has already been answered. That's one of the great scriptures of the Bible that's not always uh, emphasized in our spiritual centers and in our churches. But pray as if your prayer has already been answered. That means that you have to become the energy that you desire. You have to become the energy that you pray for. See, Harriet Tubman, and I often talk about her. She's one of our great historical luminaries, but she's also a great spiritual luminary. Harriet Tubman became the prayer that she prayed. She embodied all of the steps that I've discussed this morning. She's, she embodied the knowing aspect of her soul. She stepped into the knowingness of who she was. She knew that freedom was her birthright. Number two, she visualized. She visualized. She saw herself. As a free woman, she stepped inside of her prayer and saw herself as a free woman through her mind's eye. Number three, she became the prayer that she that she prayed for. She became free because she embraced thoughts and behaviors of a free person. She didn't limit herself to the law of that day. She didn't limit herself to rules and restrictions of the plantation. She used divine law to become the fullest expression of her own self. She used the divine law to become the fullest expression of herself. See, this is the season and time to become the fullest expression of who you are. And it's time for you to also step into the fullest expression of the prayer that you've been praying. See, again, prayer is not wishing and hoping for good. Through prayer, you step into the good. See, become the prayer that you pray. Take on the thoughts and behaviors that support your deepest desires. See, remember the same spirit of Freedom that was in Harriet Tubman 
That same spirit of freedom that was in Harry Tubman is the same spirit of freedom that's within you. See, when you are free in the spirit, you become free to be who you want to be. And, and when you are free to be who you want to be, you are free to manifest what you want to manifest. It's, it's all up to us in terms of aligning ourselves with the prayer. See, slaves engage in wishful thinking see, because they are attached to slave religion. I'm going to repeat it again. Slaves engage in wishful thinking because they are attached to a slave religion. They have a slave view of themselves. See, prayer, when you really understand and know what prayer is, prayer does not limit you. Prayer liberates you. See, prayer liberates you. As we close this morning, number one, Remember to pray as if your prayer has already answered. Prayer has been, has to be established. Prayer has to be established on a firm foundation of knowingness. Prayer has to be established on a firm foundation of knowingness. You can't, you can't establish your prayer on grounds of uncertainty anymore. See, we're growing into a new age. We're growing in an era where we're going to have to become more certain of who we are and how we move through the world. We can't show up being afraid and doubtful. We have to become the prayer that we pray. So we have to know who we are. We have to stop saying, I wonder if God heard my prayer. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and everywhere evenly present. The only person, the only person that needs to hear your prayer and to become convinced of your prayer is you. I'm going to repeat it again because it's worth repeating. The only person that needs to hear your prayer and to become convinced of your prayer is you. See, the scripture tells you, be still and know that I'm God. See, when you pray a prayer and you pray it right, your human self aligns with the all-knowing aspect of who you are. Your human self begins to align with your God self. And something begins to happen to your soul. There's a transformation that happens within your soul. When you pray a prayer and you pray it right and you know who you are as a spiritual being. Number two, remember to see the prayer that you prayed through your mind's eye. Now we use, we have to use our visualization to see where we are in consciousness. Use the power of your God-given imagination to visualize your prayer. Visualization, visualization is a powerful tool to help you to feel the energy of what you desire. So see yourself. You want good health? See yourself in good health. You want to see, you want to be in positive relationship? You got to see yourself in a positive relationship. You want good financial conditions? You have to see yourself in good financial conditions. You are the only person. You are the only person that can really see your future because you are the only person that can see inside your mind. You are the only person that can see inside of your mind. Number three in my final point. You must become. This is the kicker. You must become the prayer that you pray. Your thoughts and your behaviors must be aligned with your prayer. See, faith without works is dead. Stop begging an external God to drop goodies from the sky. It doesn't work that way. The good is within you. See, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within, meaning that's within you, and it is already at hand. So you have to embrace the divine richness that's within your soul. Be rich 
and express richness in all areas of your life. I'm going to repeat it again. Be rich and express richness in all areas of your life. You are the prayer that you pray. Thank you for joining me this morning on this broadcast. We invite you to come back again next week to donate to Truth and Transformation Ministries, you can donate via Cash App, and you do that through dollar sign Transformation 1971. To donate via PayPal, you do that through paypal.me forward slash transform the number seven. I'm going to repeat that again. PayPal dot me forward slash tr uh, transform the number seven to order my book transformative thoughts of soul sacred shift you may call the church office at 404-274-4300 have a prosperous productive week you have been transformed